Idaho Batholith by Justin Carpenter. There are only three in the state of Idaho. The three batholiths stretch from the largest batholith. The Atlantic Batholith, which is near the center of Idaho, located in the Boise National Forest. Then further up north from the Atlantic Batholith is the Bitterroot Batholith, in the Bitterroot National Forest. And then in the third batholith is much further up north in Idaho, which is the smallest in the Kalitsu Batholith, which is located in the Kalitsu National Forest. The ones labeled as red are granite and granodorite of the two mica suits are found in the Cretaceous time period. This includes biotite granodorite of the Tumica suit and muscovite biotite granite and granodorite of the Tumica suit. The ones labeled in orange are granite and granodorite of the hornblende biotite suit. They are found in the Cretaceous time period, which includes hornblende biotite granodorite, hornblende granodorite, biotite granodorite, and potassium ridge granodorite. They also include megacrystic grandorite and minor cyanite. The peach color are orthogonized foliated grandorite and foliated granite, which are all found in the Cretaceous time frame. The material labeled in yellow are tonalite and quartz diorite, which are also found in the Cretaceous time period. The light green symbolizes the myelinite platonic rocks within the western Idaho structure zone in the Cretaceous time period. The ones in dark green are tronolite and trongemite, which are both in the Cretaceous and Jurassic time frames. They include biotite and hornblende biotite tronolite and biotite muscovite trongelite. Primarily along structure zones, all dated bodies are in the Cretaceous time frame. The oceanic crust submerging under the continental crust melts due to the high increase in pressure under the moho. The magma from the melting oceanic crust then rises due to the differences in density between the surrounding rock and the magma, and this creates the granite composition that lies 5 to 10 miles beneath the surface and then through the long cooling process of these platoons created the hard crystallized rocks we now know as the batholiths. The platoons that still end up reaching the surface end up erupting as volcanoes or which the magma flows out onto the surface and cools quickly. But for the platoons that don't reach the surface right away they remain under the crust and go through the slow cooling process that end up crystallizing and hardening, which form the batholiths. As they cool, they slowly rise and due to the constant erosion and weathering, they reach the surface and are very visible. After thousands of years of erosion and weathering, the geologic ground above the batholiths have been eroded down, forming large mountains of granite. Because the granite takes a lot longer to erode due to the fact the thickness and hardness is much greater than that of most other rocks surrounding the platoons. Through the process of radiometric dates and field relations, the age of the Idaho batholiths have been estimated to be 60 to 100 million years old. The major structure features are mountains and canyons due to the difference in hardness and thickness between the granite and the surrounding rocks. Through the present topography of the batholiths after years of erosion, we can now see where the tips of the batholiths lie. And with this information, we know that the melting of the oceanic plates occurred underneath the continental plate. From that information, we now know that the oceanic plate was once under the continental plate located underneath the Idaho batholiths, which tells us that the slope of the oceanic plate was different than the current slope it is today. The high balloon shaped mountains or higher areas on the topography maps show us exactly where the tops of the batholiths are. Due to the slow cooling rate of magma, this has created a majority of the batholiths to consist of granite, 
And since granite is such a hard rock, it is sought after in today's world for countertops and other things. The main resource taken from the bathless in today's world is the granite. Only in the past, the minerals sought after wasn't granite, it was gold. Due to the slow cooling rate deep underground that formed the granite, it also formed gold veins throughout the granite. The gold eroded off the granite first due to the difference in hardness and continued downstream. The gold was found in the Boise River years ago, and this is what sparked the gold rush of 1861 in Idaho.